Elizabeth Ross had been working as a waitress for a couple of months. She didn't have a permanent position, but got called in whenever there was work. She worked for a catering company and served food and drinks at events held at outdoor locations. That day, she arrived at the venue with the other servers to work at the wedding of a very influential businessman's daughter. Elizabeth had already worked at several events of this kind, so she knew well what her responsibilities were. Since the client was a very wealthy man, there were many guests attending the celebration. The wait staff was exhausted, running between the tables with trays full of delicious food and drinks. Unlike her co-workers, Elizabeth didn't complain about the workload and irregular hours, but rather rejoiced at every dollar she could earn. The fact was that she had two young kiddos waiting for her at home, so she did her best to provide them with everything they needed. Kevin and Sally were the meaning of Elizabeth's life, and she was ready to do anything to make sure they were all right. Elizabeth's husband died three years ago, and it was an extremely painful blow for her. Not a day went by that she didn't think of Simon and the happy days they'd spent together. Of course, Elizabeth understood that there was no going back and that she needed to adapt to her new life. Moving between the tables, the waitress made sure that every guest had everything they needed. At some point, the woman looked at the stage and saw the wedding couple standing on it. Elizabeth never saw the bride before in her life, but the groom's face made her stop in her tracks. She nearly dropped her tray in surprise. What? No way, that's… that's impossible, the waitress whispered. The woman was so shocked that she couldn't hear or see anything that was going on around her. Elizabeth turned pale and tears froze in the corner of her eyes. The woman's lips started trembling treacherously and she felt dizzy and weak in the legs. At that moment, Elizabeth felt as if she had saw a ghost standing in front of her. The fact was that standing next to the bride was no one else but Simon Ross her late husband, who supposedly died three years ago. There could be no mistake, Elizabeth was 100% sure. It was definitely her husband. After all, three years wasn't long enough for her to forget how her own husband looked. Sure, Simon had put on a little weight and changed his hairstyle, but that was all that had changed about him. Elizabeth's first thought was to get up on stage and get to the bottom of things right there and then. But when she saw the crowd of excited guests surrounding the newlyweds, she changed her mind. Needless to say, the woman could barely do her job in such an agitated state. She was literally shaking from the realization that she'd been deceived in such a shameless way. Elizabeth had been mourning her husband all this time and going to his grave, laying flowers on it. So that's where you've been, Simon, the woman thought. Elizabeth patiently waited until her ex-husband stepped off the stage and went to his table and set out to implement her plan. She climbed the steps to get on stage and took the microphone. She knew exactly what she was going to say to the newlyweds. However, the guests were so busy having fun that they didn't even notice the waitress, who climbed up on the stage for some inexplicable reason. It was only her boss who tensed up visibly, realizing that something bad was about to happen. Can I have a moment of your attention, please? Elizabeth said, taking the microphone in her hands. I'd like to congratulate Simon and his bride on the day of their wedding. May your life be filled with the kind of happiness you've been dreaming about. Elizabeth continued. At that point, the guests started to grumble. The woman didn't learn the reason for their indignation until a little later, when her boss literally dragged her off the stage and started berating her for what she had did. What do you think you're doing? And who's Simon? The groom's name is Alfred Miller. He's a businessman from Miami. Why did you even think to get up on the stage? Your area of expertise is here between the tables. But there was no convincing Elizabeth. The woman saw the fear that flashed in Simon's eyes, which meant that she was right. Of course, the man pretended to be genuinely surprised at the words of the waitress and claimed that she mistook him for someone else. It looked very convincing, but Elizabeth knew that Simon was lying. That's not Alfred Miller, that's Simon Ross, the woman kept thinking. The guests quickly forgot all about the incident and continued to have fun, celebrating the newlyweds. After all, weddings are always very eventful. Anything can happen there, be it a fight or a declaration of love. Elizabeth left the venue as soon as she got paid for her work. The rest of the party was uneventful, but the young waitress never got a chance to get close enough to Simon to talk to him. Meanwhile, he didn't show any desire to do so, so the woman decided to put off getting to the bottom of things. 
After all, she did have two kiddos waiting for her at home, and they loved their mother with all of their hearts. On the way home, Elizabeth decided to stop by the store to get Kevin and Sally some treats. She knew that her son loved cotton candy, while her daughter preferred ice cream. Having picked out everything she needed, the woman headed to the checkout and laid out the purchases on the table. Unfortunately, when Elizabeth reached into her pocket to get the money, she'd realized that she'd lost the pay she got from her boss. Only then did Elizabeth realize that she was in trouble. When the waitress put the money in her pocket at the end of her shift, she didn't notice a large hole in it, which is how she lost her salary. Oh God, why didn't I just put it in my wallet right away? Elizabeth thought, having a hard time holding back her tears. The cashier looked at the woman standing in front of her with undisguised irritation and asked, Are you going to pay? If not, please step aside and don't hold up the line. Elizabeth had never felt so ashamed in her life. People in the line began to grumble and the situation was getting more unpleasant by the second. Elizabeth was ready to leave her purchases and run out of the store empty-handed. Fortunately, a very pleasant young man was watching the situation develop. He then stepped out of the line and came to Elizabeth's aid. Having asked for the price of Elizabeth's purchase and then handed the cashier his credit card without a hint of hesitation. Here, please put this lady's purchases on my card. Having called Elizabeth lady, the stranger inadvertently made her night. Having blushed deeply, the young waitress couldn't help but smile joyfully. Elizabeth hadn't gotten a compliment in so long that she'd forgotten what it felt like. Having run the man's card, the cashier chuckled and returned it to its owner. In the depths of her soul, she felt jealous that the handsome man was paying so much attention to some beggar who couldn't even pay for her own purchases. Having thanked the stranger for his help, Elizabeth took her bag of groceries and hurried towards the exit. But before the waitress had time to get outside, the nice man caught up with her. Excuse me, miss, can I, can I walk you home? It's getting late and I think it could be dangerous for a young woman to be outside alone. Elizabeth looked into his eyes and shrugged her shoulders somewhat indecisively. On their way to her house, the young people started talking and learned a lot of interesting things about each other. Elizabeth's savior was Francis Price. He was in New York on business. Francis had told Elizabeth that he was a businessman and came to the metropolis for a business trip. Since the man didn't have a ring on his finger, Elizabeth concluded that he wasn't married. The man soon confirmed her suspicions by telling her that he'd lost his wife and little daughter in a car accident five years ago. Elizabeth nodded sympathetically. She knew what it felt like to lose a loved one. The young people enjoyed talking to each other so much that they didn't even realize it when they reached Elizabeth's home. The man shook her hand politely in parting and said goodbye. Elizabeth invited Francis to come inside, but he politely refused, although he did ask for the woman's phone number. Frankly speaking, Elizabeth didn't think that they'd ever see each other ever again. Nevertheless, she did give the man her number. Inside, Kevin and Sally were already waiting for their mother and immediately pounced on the treat she brought them. Calm down, kids. Leave some for the morning, Elizabeth said with a smile. Surprisingly, she didn't feel all that bad about losing the money that she had worked so hard to earn. The incident with Simon at the wedding got pushed out of her mind by the situation with the kind man who came to her rescue at the store. However, when Elizabeth took a shower and went to bed, the thoughts of her ex-husband took over her mind again. Inadvertently, the woman let herself go on a trip down memory lane, which took her back seven years to when it all started. She was a freshman at the university at the time, studying economics. The young woman was confident that her life would be full of great things. She came to New York from a small town and hoped to settle there. Elizabeth's parents were bankrupt farmers from Oklahoma, and therefore they couldn't afford to help their daughter all that much. Elizabeth was the eldest of five children, and she understood that she couldn't count on her parents' help for much longer. The young woman felt that moving to New York would change her life. Her intuition didn't fail her, and soon a new kind of life started for Elizabeth. Neon signs, the frantic pace of life, and the never-ending humming of cars turned her head and literally drove the naive provincial woman crazy. Then she met Simon at one of the student parties. When you're young and full of energy, any event can be made into a celebration of life. That day was no exception. Simon immediately noticed the pretty young woman, who mostly kept to herself 
thus making it obvious that she wasn't a local. Simon was great at courting, and therefore he quickly turns Elizabeth's head and won her heart. Flowers, gifts, dinners at expensive restaurants, it all simply couldn't leave the inexperienced young woman indifferent. At first, the young people were just friends, but they quickly crossed that line and made them lovers. Initially, Simon didn't tell his girlfriend where he worked. But when their relationship became more intimate, he told her that he was a businessman. However, whenever Elizabeth tried to find out more about his line of work, Simon always changed the subject of the conversation. It was clear that he didn't want to talk about his job. Over time, Elizabeth just stopped asking him about it and simply accepted the fact that Simon wasn't going to let her into that part of his life. But when he asked Elizabeth to marry him, she didn't seem to care about it anymore. At first, life with Simon seemed like a fairy tale come true. The couple spent their honeymoon in Miami, and then they settled in the suburbs of New York, having rented a house. First, they had a little baby boy, Kevin, who was soon followed by a daughter, Sally. The kids were born just one year apart. Back then, Elizabeth truly believed that her life was perfect and there was nothing else she needed to be completely happy. Everything was great. Elizabeth and Simon had an amazing relationship and the young family had enough money to cover all of their needs. But then, strange things began to happen. First of all, it was the changes in Simon's behavior. All of a sudden, he became very suspicious and extremely cautious. The man was afraid to answer phone calls from unknown numbers and he stopped opening the door to strangers. At first, Elizabeth thought that it was just a precaution, but then she realized that something was going on with her husband. Honey, are you having some kind of problems? Elizabeth tried to ask him, but Simon flat out refused to talk about it and then he suddenly disappeared. There was no warning or anything. Simon simply got into his car and went to a business meeting. But when he did not come back home for dinner, Elizabeth got worried. He didn't answer his phone, and the woman simply had no other way of contacting him. The next day, Elizabeth went to the police, but the officer told her that she needed to wait for three days before she could list him as missing. Anything could have happened, ma'am. Men can sometimes go off the grid for a bit and then return home as if nothing had happened. There's no reason for concern yet. But Elizabeth could feel it in her heart. Something terrible had happened. In fact, she didn't even know if her husband was alive or if she'd ever get to see him again. It was only then that Elizabeth realized that she didn't know anything about Simon. She couldn't even go to his office because she had no idea where it was. Moreover, she didn't find anything in his home office that could help her identify his place of work. At that moment, an interesting thought popped into Elizabeth's head. What if her husband was a con artist? Three days later, the police started searching for Simon, but they never found him. Moreover, in addition to the businessman himself, all the money disappeared from the family's accounts and the man's car was found several miles outside the city. It was parked in the forest and had broken windows and mangled doors. When forensics examined the interior of the car, they found bloodstains on the seats and concluded that the blood could be Simon's. Despite the fact that the businessman's body was never found, everyone assumed that he was dead. Elizabeth was no exception, even though at first she truly believed that the police would find Simon. It's hard to even imagine what the single mother had to go through before she came to terms with her new reality and found the strength to move on with her life. It was only her little kiddos, Kevin and Sally, who helped Elizabeth find the will to keep going. Three years flew by like a flash. During this time, Elizabeth kept thinking about Simon, who simply disappeared from her life, leaving behind many unresolved issues. The woman still didn't know where Simon worked and why he was killed. Elizabeth didn't believe that her husband was a criminal, but she didn't believe that his death was an accident either. And now, having arrived at that wedding, she saw that he was alive and well, standing next to his rich bride. All this reminded her of her own wedding when she also stood next to Simon and felt truly happy. On the other hand, Elizabeth knew that getting involved in her now ex-husband's life wouldn't really solve anything. How would it help me if I caused a scene? If Simon wanted to, he would have come home. But he chose to leave me with our two children and disappear. Elizabeth thought, sadly. That night, the woman didn't get much sleep. 
All kinds of thoughts were swarming in her head, making it difficult to relax and doze off even for a bit. Nevertheless, the next day promised Elizabeth new troubles and worries. Having had a hasty breakfast, she took the kiddos to daycare and thanked her neighbor for taking care of them the day before. Mrs. Donahue was a single woman in her 70s who helped Elizabeth for free, taking on the role of a nanny. But before Elizabeth had gone even half a mile away from the house, a man stepped out of the car parked out on the side of the street. Having turned her head, Elizabeth shuddered. It was Simon. The man recognized her and waved her to get into the car. At first, Elizabeth felt rather agitated and even somewhat scared, but seeing that there were a lot of people around, she decided to accept the invitation. Of course, Simon didn't throw himself into her arms and didn't ask for forgiveness. Instead, the man kept saying that it wasn't his fault. According to Simon, three years ago, he needed to disappear and cut all ties that could eventually lead to him. At that moment, Elizabeth realized that her first guess was correct. Simon really was a con artist who moved from place to place deceiving his investors. When they were about to catch him, he changed his last name by getting married and thus acquired temporary families. This wasn't the first time he staged his own death either. So how many ex-wives do you have around the country? Elizabeth exclaimed. I don't think you need to know this, but I never loved anyone as much as I loved you. Simon hurried to reassure the woman. Elizabeth didn't doubt for a second that he was lying to her. She finally learned to tell when she was being deceived, and thus she didn't believe a single word coming out of Simon's mouth. Meanwhile, the man kept talking and talking about how all these years he only thought about his family, but was afraid to come back. Elizabeth quietly listened to her now ex-husband, and only at the end of his monologue did she reply, Who are you trying to fool, Simon? You'll never ever see your kids again. They think that you're dead, and that's how it's going to stay. You have a new life, a new name, and a new wife. So, go ahead, live your new life. But remember that one day, your house of cards will come crumbling down, and you'll have to answer before the law for everything you did. Simon turned pale and started saying something about having left his criminal life in the past. Elizabeth didn't really believe him, but chose not to dwell on it. Instead, she got out of the car and went about her business, finally leaving her past in the past. She knew that now she definitely wasn't going to see Simon ever again. With each step she took, the woman's confidence grew stronger, and for the first time in several years, she felt free. Now, she was no longer held down by the memory of her husband, who disappeared under mysterious circumstances, leaving her with her two young kiddos in her care. A whole new life was waiting for Elizabeth, and she knew that she was destined to find her true love. She decided to start by setting up a meeting with the kind man from the store, who helped her pay for her purchases. Elizabeth truly believed that Cupid was working to help her find true happiness. Francis was very glad to see Elizabeth again, and therefore he took this opportunity to ask her out to dinner. The first date was followed by the second, and then the third. This time, Elizabeth was in no hurry to make things legal and only agreed to marry Francis a year after they met. Around the same time, she heard about Simon again. He was running yet another scam and got caught which got him featured in many news reports. Elizabeth took it rather calmly, but she didn't feel even a drop of sympathy for her ex-husband. Simon got what he deserved, which was a five-year sentence in a state county jail. Elizabeth, on the other hand, was enjoying her life together with Francis, who didn't just become her husband, but also took it upon himself to raise Kevin and Sally as if they were his own biological children.